what I would like to call myself as a poor little rich girl. Sorry, sorry, you call yourself what? A poor, poor little rich a girl. Poor little rich girl, yeah. I come from a family that does business. What kind of business does your family do? My my family of origin does logistics business in Malaysia. Uh, Malaysia, that's right. I'm involved in the administration part of it, not really directly in the direction of business or things like that. So what prompted my journey in investing was I was no longer in the business, but I remember that my dad is to invest in shares. I think that the kind of Share, I suspect it was not the value investing type, it was the rumor type. Mm. Whoever say buy, whoever say so I, I remember very vaguely of that. So that was my memory of my family side of share trading. My mom also does, okay. but my mom does more blue chip like Genting, oh. Bank, and uh, I remember they'll go for she'll go for IPOs. Oh, so she has access to those companies that's going IPO. Yeah, like Petronas and at the time, like those old times through the banks. Okay. I believe through the banks, I'm not, or maybe through the oh, remise then. Okay. I'm not sure, but that was my memory of it. I yeah. never participated in it because you're still young. That's my young childhood. Yeah. That was my memory of it. Then when I was in college, I actually did finance as my minor. Oh, but what's your, what's your major in? International business management. And the reason you went for this major is because it's to support the family because business. Because I was trying to escape accounting. Oh. <laughs> because that's what you did for your family business, right? So basically, I was a very naughty child, trying to be smart. I skipped the accounting degree, so thinking international business management was an easier degree to graduate from. But I kept the finance part because I was interested in finance, just not the accounting bit. So which part are you interested in? I was interested in like economics and all this lah, right? Mm. In the finance bit. Mm. One subject really interested me was actually fund management. Fund management. I was actually financial markets and fund management. Okay. Yeah. And because maybe the teacher also was very good. In you mean handsome or? <laughs> no, he was actually good. He was very good. He was very good. He was very straight. But in his way of educating us, it was, it was also funny. It was very relatable. Because I hear my parents talk about shares, right? About mm. companies. So whatever he said, it was relatable to me. That's like, oh, that's what my parents are doing. Okay, things like that. But of course, minus the techn- technicality from my parents' side. Mm. But when I graduated, I actually worked in a, a the oh, investment no. side of insurance company. So basically, that was my first eye open. I never knew that the premiums that we pay for insurance actually were used to invest. Mm. Okay. I never knew. But when I started working there, was, oh, wow, no, that's... So that was my first exposure in getting, like, really direct, that kind of exposure. But it was nothing to do with shares as well. But it was really, like, how to gen- use money to generate money. Oh, okay. So that's where you learn about the concept of making the money work harder for you in the sense, like, right? Okay. Right. But of course, that's not my money. Lah. That's the company's money. I've always been an employee all my life. And then got married and have children. Then I was I became a single mom. And then every day, like I think inflation was going up and all that. And I was thinking like our income is not sufficient. Hmm. But there was not enough savings for me hmm. to really do something about that. In 2019, when my dad passed away, my dad left me some cash. So what I did was, someone very wise shared with me, someone very close to my dad shared with me, is because cash can deplete. Yeah. He didn't give me any access, but he left me. Cash can deplete. I'm thinking, oh my God, what am I going to do with cash? And I wasn't working then, but then I was remarried. I was in a very complicated situation where, where I wasn't working. Okay. So I was thinking, oh my God, what am I going to do with all this cash which will deplete if I don't do it? Then somebody very close to my dad said, why don't you create something out of that? So I was thinking of investing in businesses and things like that. And then mm. the pandemic happened. Okay. So somehow I thought, you know what? I'm going to use a, ch- a little bit of that money. Mm. And educate yourself. I actually remarried, as I mentioned, I remarried earlier. Then I went back to my husband. We actually married to Australia. But I moved back to Malaysia because my parents okay. felt ill. Okay. Both of them. Yeah, so I actually stayed back and that was the reason why I wasn't working. Hmm. But I also was 
investing. When my mom was still around, we actually studied together. Okay. We nice. actually studied like together. Mother, daughter. She, yeah, because she liked chess, right? Because she was in IPOs and all that. Hmm. Um, we learned together, but unfortunately, after that, she passed away. Then I went back to I went back to Australia to reunite with my husband. Okay. My husband had to work in Australia, so I wanted to keep up with the investment, like what I did for options, how hmm. I applied the principles was. I decide which company I want to keep. Hmm. And then I, or which company I'm targeting to hold share out. Hmm. Then I will use the options to generate the income. Well, or let's say it yeah, generate the premium, but let's say, correct, then if it, it strikes, it's also okay because I'm happy with the price that I bought hmm. in. I but of course, in the partial of my portfolio, I also got greedy and invested in some which uh, is the biggest regret of my life. <laughs> it's a good lesson uh, at, at, at that point of time because I think greed over yeah. rationality and then that's where you made a learning lesson for yourself correct i actually thought that i was good just because i was making good money earlier but i realized that i wasn't it wasn't that it wasn't that because i i i outsmarted myself and grew out of the principles of my... yeah. but what happened i noticed when i went to australia the time difference was very difficult for me mm. because we were three hours apart mm. from malaysia so for Malaysia, when the share market opens, it's still about 10 p.m. here. Ooh. But in Australia, it's already 1 a.m. So it's like super late and then, yeah. <laughs> I really tried, I really tried. But after a while, it was just very hard. Okay. Um, okay, you mentioned so, that, you, mentioned that uh, you, will, the, the, you have time difference between Australia and Malaysia, but... You are investing more in options or you are investing more in the Oh, uh, that's right, right. So I, I yeah. Uh. Also because I was an investment banker in in one of the merchant banks before. Mm, okay. I'm not very keen on Malaysian stocks. I invest in US stocks. Okay. My portfolio is all US. So I don't have many I don't have any Malaysian because of the move to Australia, it made it very hard to do what I used to do mm. and maintain that. So occasionally, sometimes I still do because sometimes I find the stock so interesting when I go at the thing. For example, Trade Desk was one of, one of when the price was really low, it was about 50, wow. 50 something. I did option. I, I, I got the stock first and then I did option. It was really good, but now it has got up to... But, so there are still some stocks that when I find it, then I'm going to do it. Okay. But in terms of like regular maintenance of the profit, it's quite hard because of the timing. Um... Of course, sometimes attending, hearing, watching the replays and things that uh, inspires me again. Okay. Then I will try to come in. <laughs> I see. Yeah. Do you do your own uh, investment research yourself or you're just listening to recordings? Or... I used to do my investment, my own investment researches and all that, but I found that it takes up a lot of time. Hmm. So I tend to go back to the community. So I tend to use that and I watch, see what the community has to say. And then also, if I still can't grab the company, but I want to know, then I'll go and do some reading, some okay. YouTube. So your journey, from what I'm hearing, is that you came out, you started working for your family business as a admin staff. Then after that, you want to get out of it. And then that's why you went to learn, uh, went, you went to university to go into international business. Uh, right. So sorry, sorry, it's all jumbo. Uni <laughs> and oh, then... Uh, Part of yeah, but my first exposure was listening to my parents hmm. talk about shares lah. Do, do but, they talk among each other frequently to about stocks and all this stuff? No, they don't talk to each other about it, but they have share investments. And then when I went to uni, that's when I found oh really interesting. Hmm. Then I got my job hmm. from in the insurance company as their first experience of learning that how money makes money. Right? So I tend to like oh so anyway, uh so yeah, then know. after that, I joined my dad's company. I joined my dad's company. Okay. Then at that time, I then it's when I really realized I need to make, we need to make money, use money to make money. But I didn't really have much resources to do it mm. until my dad passed away and left me a little bit of cash. How many siblings do you have? I have two younger brothers. Yeah, I think I'm, I'm the only daughter. So... I never really had to do much. I think I'm the one being taken care of. That's why I'm like the poor little rich girl. Lah. Oh. <laughs> so the poor, which part of it yeah. is poor, then which part of it is rich? <laughs> because they take care of me. Ma. 
So I didn't really have to think about money until because when you are when I'm a single mom, I stay by myself. Mm. So I don't depend on the family so much. Although I'm working in a part of the family business, mm. as a You grow up, you don't keep going back to the family. I want to try to be more independent, right? Definitely. So I think I learned my my true independence much later, away, being away from the family. Don't mind me asking this, but I think this is a bit more personal. Like, as you grew up with your parents both separated, how was it in terms of your experience when you grew up? Actually, they separated when I was about not that young. I was actually about twenty one, but the pain is the same. Painful because a child I always feel that the mom and dad is a part of them. Hmm. No matter how old you are, right? So when the parents separate or when you break up, right, you always feel there's a part of you that's broken. Oh, that's true. For me, lah, that was how I felt. That's why I figured that no matter how old you are, I think it's the same. Hmm. But. If you're younger, it depends what the parents tell the child. When my ex husband and I separated, we 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 separated amicably. Okay, it was not like a harsh divorce or whatsoever. Mm. We told our daughter, our daughter, I said, "Hey, you know what? Our job was to bring you to the world, mm. and you're growing up so well. So now we don't really need to be husband and wife anymore." Then you said, mm. then she was like, being four or five years old, like, yeah, mommy, but I'm growing up so well. Yeah, but we don't need to be husband and wife anymore. But the best news is. We will always remain as your mommy and daddy. So for that, it's really depends on what the parents tell the child. Hmm. So my child, she missed her dad because she stayed with me, but hmm. she never felt that she was not home, or she never felt that sadness or why、well, because we didn't make it ugly. You have to be mature about it, like as long as the understanding is right, why the marriage couldn't go on, right? Okay. So it's, because, it's not because of it's not because of the you guys came to a consensus for a certain reason. I I think let's not delve into it lah. But I think the way you convey to your daughter actually made her understand the reason, and it doesn't change the fact that you guys are still the parents, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Because a lot of people feel that a lot of child, I think, when they feel that their parents go through divorce, without being without because they misunderstand that husband and wife and parents are not the same thing. Hmm. Yeah. You, some parents or some couples remain together, thinking that they are together and it's good for the child. But the husband is always outside working, but the mom is the one doing everything. Okay. What's the difference of being a single mom? The child has to understand the husband and wife relationship and the parent relationship is different. The parent child relationship is different.、Mm. Right. Or、okay. single parent, like it can be any gender. It can be the father or the mother is working. It doesn't matter. Because it's not about being together; it is about being available to the child. Exactly. So I I also concur that like time with the kid is much more important than earning money in a sense, lah. Right? Because at that young at at their young age, all they crave for is not materialistic stuff like what yeah,、uh, maybe、really. adults are looking for. Right? All they need is really the attention and also the 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 the, the fun and also the engagement that the parents are giving to them. I'm really into parenting, actually. Although I'm a single mom,、mm. my daughter and I have many conversations. But I think having a daughter is easy, lah. Okay, I have many conversations with my daughter, and sometimes I even ask her, "Do you feel incomplete?" No, and she said that she actually was very wise. She said that people should stop seeing that they need a father or mother.、Mm. They need a parent,、uh. and I, I know if I sounds like I'm boasting when I say this, but she said that. Mom, you are a very good parent to me. I don't feel incomplete at all. I love the role as my as a single mom to my daughter the most. Coming back to investing is also, I really appreciate the courses that I've learned because of the education. It gives me the choice of not having to go out to work. Wow,、well, thank you too much for sharing this, man. No worries, my pleasure. Any experience you want to share with the younger generation when it comes to maybe personal finance and investing per se? Fundamentally, get to know yourself first. Get to know your own wealth timing, right? And then really start young. Truly start young. When you start making your money, then you start to allocate some money and then start to look into explore investing while you can still afford it. Start to look into having money, make money for you, but don't be greedy.